Brad let his fingers trace over the letters on the floorboards once more. He had to make sure that they were real, and not just some mirage conjured by wishful thinking. The letters read, S plus A plus M. The first initial of everyone that had lived at the cabin with him, in addition to being a nickname that Sammy would probably adopt once he was a bit older. Brad saw, now that he was examining them a bit more closely, that the letters had been cut into the dark wooden floor very deeply. It wasn't as smooth as the boy's usual carving either. Suddenly he winced and jerked his hand back, only barely managing to hold back a swear of mingled pain and annoyance. Just as the thought had gone through his head, a splinter had buried deep under the skin of his first finger. He tilted his finger, squinting at it against the light that struggled in from the grimy window. Then he took a deep breath and caught the edge of the splinter between his finger and thumb. He had always hated splinters. It might be a minor pain in the grand scheme of things, but something about the way they scraped along as you pulled them out made his skin crawl. Brad yanked quickly, trying to get it over with as soon as possible. He still felt every millisecond like nails on a chalkboard. The splinter was thin, but it was also pretty long. A drop of blood welled up and then trickled down over his dirty skin, leaving a wobbly line of red that quickly darkened from vermilion to garnet. Remington moved to lick it, and Brad shooed him away. It was hard to resist the urge to wipe his finger on his pants, but they were even filthier than his hands, covered in the ashes of the retirement home fire and splattered at the cuffs by Walker's blood. It had stiffened to the fabric there, making parts of it stand rigidly away from his equally filthy boots. Quickly, he pulled the bottle of water from his pocket and poured a bit over the small wound, flushing it out. He still didn't want to get up. An infection could kill a person just as quickly as a religious nut job could take them down. More quickly in his case, he realized in surprise. None of the fanatics he had encountered had managed to kill him, and they'd all tried pretty hard. How many crazy people had he escaped from since the whole thing had begun? The short answer was, a hell of a lot more than he had ever known existed. He hadn't been completely naive before all of this, no matter what his father had thought. He had known that there were bad people, people who believed insane things and who wanted to force those beliefs onto others. Hell, he had been raised by one. But he hadn't thought they were this prolific. Or maybe he simply hadn't thought that they'd be this likely to survive. He rubbed his thumb over the small hole in his finger, washing away the last traces of dirt. It was a little sore, but that would go away soon. It was a very minor injury. Brad forced his mind back to the letters and the date on the floor. That was the more important consideration right now. And if he was honest with himself, he had to admit that it was the easier thing to think about. He didn't want to think about the family. He didn't want to remember the retirement community or the things he'd seen and done there. He especially didn't want the memories of his father crowding in. The carving. He needed to focus on the letters and not the screams that still played through his mind when it got too quiet. Most of them were Jamie's desperate pleas to be saved. Brad knew that the guilt over Jamie's death would never go away. It clung to him, just like the smell of smoke that he had been unable to get out of his mind. Both fires seemed to linger, not just in his mind, but on his skin. He wondered about the possibility of heating some water and being able to wash off before he set out again. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe he could even take the time to rinse his clothes. The scent of smoke on him brought up memories that he didn't want. Sometimes he could see the cabin collapsing in front of him again, taking his last sense of security and protection with it as it went. Other times it was the retirement community that he saw going up in smoke, cloaking the guilty and the innocent as he ran. It also made him remember his father. He couldn't stand to think of how Lee would feel if he knew what had happened to the cabin. He could picture the disappointed fury in his father's eyes as he surveyed the rubble that was left of his pride and joy.